OK, today we are studying what I think is the hardest form of factoring. And I admit to not liking it, but I don't know anybody who likes it. So we have a sheet here and I had already said I'm going to upload it for people. Um, a sheet to take you step by step through the process of working the AC method. OK, so the first thing you do whenever you factor anything is you look at the whole expression. And you ask yourself, is there a GCF in all three terms at the same time? That's what a GCF is. And the answer, unfortunately, is no. Now, if we had 12 and 10 and 2, we could pull out a 2 at least. But notice that this 11, no, no 2's in that. So there is no common factor for all three terms. And then also these two terms have X's, but the last one doesn't. So we are sunk, OK? So there is no greatest common factor, no GCF, which in some ways makes life easier. Now we're going to write what A, B, and C are of the trinomial we're factoring. So A is 12, B is 11, and C is 2. Now you've been through this for the past several days this week. ABC, the whole ABC way of looking at quadratic trinomials that comes from the general form, the formula for a, um, a quadratic trinomial in standard form, AX squared plus BX plus C. So this helps us find A, B, and C. Now, because notice that 12 does not equal one. What a concept. Now yesterday, the number in front of the X squared was always a one, an invisible one. And all we had to do was look at the constant at the end and factor it and find the two factors that add up to the middle number B. But now the game has changed because the A number does not equal one. So we have to use the AC method. Now what the AC method is, is you multiply the A number times the C number. And this sheet tells you what to do step by step. Multiply A by C. Okay, I'm gonna do it right here. 12 times two, equals 24. Now, this is similar to what you did yesterday, what we're about to do. Factor the product of A times C, that is 24. Excuse me, 24 is the product of A times C. The answer you get when you multiply is called the product. All right, factor the product of A times C into, that should say into, so this tells me what changes I need to make to the originals. Factor the product of A times C into all its factor pairs. You can use your calculator if you need it. So we're going to do that, 24. I'm going to factor it into all of its factor pairs. One, well, 24 equals. That helps me remember. One times 24. Two times 12. 
three times eight. Four times six. Five won't go evenly into 24. So after this, the numbers turn around six times four, eight times three, and so on. So there's no need to write them. Now, if I'm going to write all the factor pairs, then I would also write negative one times negative 24, negative two times negative 12, negative three times negative eight, and negative four times negative six. Because negative times negative is positive. Okay, I've done it. And that's what I've done for, let's see, step four. So for people who've come in later, let's go back over this. Here was our original problem. Step one, I looked for a GCF and there was none. That is the GCF for all, four ter all three terms. Okay, there wasn't one. So now I begin the steps of the AC method because the number in front of the X squared, A, is not one. So I can't use the same method I used yesterday. Instead, I'm using the AC method. I multiply A times C and I got 24. And then step four is to factor the product of A times C into all of its factor pairs. And you can certainly use your calculator to help. Or you can use an app, uh, a free app called a factor calculator. I'm going to write it again. All you have to do is go to your Play Store or uh, whatever the store is called, the web store, um, and, and look through the apps for a factor calculator. And there are tons of factor calculators that are all free. So you should try several and find out which is the best one for you. Factor calculator. OK, that's an app. Equals free app. OK, for all I know, there's one on Google that you can put on your computer. I mean, I don't know everything in the world, but don't tell anybody. OK, now. We already know what to do with this, right? Choose the factor pair that adds up to B in the formula for uh, quadratic trinomials. That is, we need to find the B number. So I'm going to look at each factor pair and ask myself, self, which one adds up to 11? Positive 11. And that would be positive three and positive eight. Now, yesterday we were able to use these two numbers just to go ahead and factor and be done, but that doesn't happen with the AC numbers. So choose the factor pair that adds up to B. That's going to be, okay, the product of the two numbers 3 times 8 is 24. That's a way of checking yourself. Check. Now the sum of the two numbers means I add 3 plus 8 equals 11. All right, because our B number is 11. I know now that I need the numbers 3 and 8.
Now create, here's, here's the difference, the big difference, six. Create a four term polynomial by breaking apart the middle term of the quadratic trinomial into two equivalent terms using the numbers from step five. I'll put that, I'll show you what that means. All right, we start out with a three term polynomial. It is 12x squared plus 11x plus two. 12 x squared, I'm going to give myself some extra room here, plus 11 x plus 2. I need to factor by grouping what we did yesterday toward the end. But I need four terms to be able to do this. The reason I had to find the numbers 3 and 8 is because the middle term breaks apart into two other terms. So our four term, oops, our four term polynomial, the first term stays the same, 12x squared. The last term stays the same, plus 2. But the middle term, 11x, is going to break apart into 3x plus 8x. And that's where the numbers 3 and 8 come in. This is my four-term polynomial that adds up to the original polynomial. It has to, right? 3x plus 8x is 11x. But I can't use just any old numbers that add up to 11. I have to use this method and then find the two terms that add up to the middle number 11. And that gives me this. Now it says factor the new term, the new four term polynomial by grouping and check. Well, you need a whole page to do that. Not really a whole page, but you need room. So that's what I'm going to do. And so that I don't make a mistake, I'm going to use the snipping tool. I love the snipping tool. I would think probably apples have the same kind of tool. There it is, that's a little big. I figure I'm less likely to make a copy error if I do this. There. Now there's my four term polynomial. And now, from here on out, we're going to use grouping just like we used yesterday. So here's what I do. I put parentheses around the first two terms, parentheses around the second two terms, and I make sure my plus is in the middle and it stays there. One of the biggest errors is to forget that that's an X, you don't write it, and then you start thinking that you're multiplying those two sets of parentheses, but you're not, you're adding them. Okay, okay, ah, there we, there we go. Okay, now this is three times four times X times X plus 3 times 1 times x. And I can see that each term contains a 3, and each term contains 
and X. So that means three X is my GCF for this set of parentheses, the greatest common factor. So I'm going to write the GCF in front, three X, make empty parentheses, mark through the circled numbers and variables. Now I write down the leftovers. I have a 4x left over here. Bring down the plus sign. And a 1. Right there. And now I am done with the first set of parentheses. For now. So I go back up here. And I write down a plus sign. And I break apart these two terms. Oh, I want blue. 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 Why? Because I just do. And notice this, 2 goes into 8 and 2 goes into 2. So we know that 2 is going to be the GCF here. But let me write it out. This will be 2 times 4x plus 2 times 1. So that 2 is present in each of these terms at the same time. So that's what I pull out to the front of the second set of parentheses. Oh well. 4x, uh, mark through it. Should have made those blue. I am not consistent. 4x is my leftover on the left, and plus 1 is my leftover on the right. And now I'm done with the second set of parentheses. That is going to annoy me. You know, it's going to just get to me. So let me do this. We call that just a little bit of OCD, but math teachers tend to be that way. OK. Now. Notice. Here is the entire problem. You've got a plus sign in the middle. That makes technically, and even really, that makes this a term and this a term, the term of a polynomial. Because inside a term, everything is multiplied. Well, but there is something added, yes, but it's in parentheses. So it's one thing. This is 3x times this one thing. 2 times this one thing. So the one thing, 4x plus 1, in parentheses, becomes the GCF, the greatest common factor. I write that in front. Then I make empty parentheses for the leftovers. It's like the refrigerator. I'm about to put the leftovers into the refrigerator. So now that I've written this down, I'm going to mark that out and I'm going to mark that out, marked out the GCF. And now I'm going to write the leftovers. I'm going to put the leftovers in the refrigerator. 3x plus 2.
I used that idea. I got that idea for the leftovers in the, in the refrigerator. I got that from a student. I thought it was the best idea I'd ever heard. Put the leftovers in the refrigerator. So I've held on to that idea ever since. All right, now I have to, I'm, I would love for that to be the correct answer. So I'm going to check my answer just to make sure. Check. Four X times three X plus two plus one times three X plus two. Now I distribute and distribute, distribute and distribute. So I'll have 4x times 3x, 4 times 3 is 12, x times x is x squared, plus 4x times 2, 4 times 2 is 8, times x is 8x. Now, plus one times three X is plus three X. And plus one times plus two is plus two. Now, finally, if I have eight X's and I add three more X's, I get 11 X's. Let's see, let's make sure that's what I started with. 12x squared plus 11x plus two. So that means my factors right here, these are the correct factorization so that I type that in the answer box. Paren 4x plus 1, close paren, open paren, 3x plus 2, close paren. So let's go back over this. It's similar, the early part of it is similar to what we did yesterday, but it's not exactly what we did yesterday. The reason we're using the AC method today and the only reason we're using the AC method is that we have a quadratic trinomial and A, the first number there, A is not one. If it were one, we would have a very easy method to use, but it's not one. So now we switch to a method called the AC method. So the first step is always the same for everything you're factoring. I already said that, I'm saying it again. You always check the whole expression to see if there's a GCF in all of the terms, and there wasn't. So then you write down what A, B, and C are. Then, you multiply the A times the C. And that gives you 24. Step four, factor 24. Factor 24 into all of its, <clears throat> all of its factors, its factor pairs. Okay, you need the factor pairs. Some, uh, some factor calculators give you the factor pairs, others don't, they just have a long list. But it's helpful 
whatever kind you get. So it's fine with me for you to use your cell phones for that because it's an app on cell phones. Bunches of different ones. Step five, choose the factor pair that adds up to B. So this step that is factoring into factor pairs and this step having to find the pair that adds up to B are the same as we used yesterday. Okay, the product of the two numbers means I multiply three times eight and I get 24, which is what A times C equal. And then the sum means I add three plus eight and that gives me 11. Oh, go away. Go away. Go away. I hate everybody. No, I don't. But Madonna, what, who is this? Oh, Billy Eilish, Eilish. Just go away. There. There we go. B. Blue, black, whatever. That has to equal the B number. And this is a step that's totally different. What is this? Step six, totally different from yesterday. The reason we use these numbers, three and eight, is because the middle term has to split apart into two terms that when you combine them, they equal the, the original middle term. So the first term stays the same, the last term stays the same. The middle term splits into two parts using these numbers. Because three plus eight e equals 11, I know that three X plus eight X equals 11 X. You can say to yourself, oh, I've got three X's and I add eight X's. What have I got? 11 X's. Okay, now, now that you've got four terms, that's what you had yesterday toward the end of the hour, factoring by grouping. Now we're just doing grouping, which is what you learned yesterday. The steps will be exactly the same. You put parentheses around the first two terms, parentheses around the second two terms. Make sure there's a plus in the middle. Then you factor the first set of parentheses by GCF and the second set of parentheses by GCF, making sure you still have your plus sign. Then, if what you have in parentheses matches, that becomes your GCF for the whole expression. You write it there, and you write what's left here. And then you check it to make sure that's the right answer. You multiply this times this. You can certainly FOIL it if you know FOIL and you want to use FOIL. But you multiply this set of parentheses by this set of parentheses. And if you end up with what you originally started with, then you've got the right answer. Your factorization is correct. Yay us! Yay us! Let's do it again so you can see it all used over again. Because now that you've seen it once, actually twice because I went over it again, it'll make more sense what I'm doing. Here we have a quadratic trinomial. Oh, but look, it's in the wrong order. 
They're trying to trick you, the people who wrote the book, bad people. Okay, they're not bad people. Eight R squared. For this method to work, you've got to put your polynomial in descending order. So minus four R minus 60. Now, We've got that right. Step one, factor out a greatest common factor if there is one. Well, there is. For sure, two goes into all of these. And in fact, four goes evenly into all of these. So let's see, we can rewrite this. Eight give myself a little extra room, 8R squared minus 4R minus 60. I believe 4 is going to be the GCF. And because the GCF here is positive, um, that means, uh, uh, the leading term is positive. That means our GCF is going to be positive. So since I already know four is going to be the GCF because eight is four times two, four is four times one, 60 is four times 15. And you can get that from your calculator. All right, so I, I have to find a positive four in each of these terms. So here I go, I've got two times four times r squared minus one times four times r. That way my four is positive if I do it that way. Minus 15 times four. Now I have one positive four, two positive fours, three positive fours. That is my GCF. So I am going to write the four here and then a big set of parentheses for the leftovers. I'm going to mark through the fours I circled so I don't write them again because it's tempting sometimes. So my leftovers are 2R squared minus 1R minus 15. And there's my closed parentheses. OK, now I don't dare lose that four. So probably a safe thing to do would be to write the four, just kind of casually write it somewhere where I can keep seeing it. But what I'm going to be factoring is 2R squared minus 1R minus 15. So this set of parentheses is going to break apart into two sets of parentheses. But that's where the work is. Notice that A is not 1, so I'm going to have to use the AC method. So A is 2. B is negative 1, C is negative 15. All right. Notice that we have to pull out a GCF first when there is one. I mean, a GCF for the whole expression 
and then worry about the leftovers, factoring the leftovers. So now I multiply A times C. Two times negative 15. Well, it would look better if I do that, wouldn't it? Two times negative 15 is negative 30. So now I factor negative 30 into all of its factor pairs. So I'll show you a trick I use to make this a little bit easier. First, I ignore the minus sign. Now this is dangerous. I'm going to write another four out here because I love to forget the four. OK, I love to forget. This four. It's so easy to forget by the time you're done. Where am I? Here I am. OK. Now, here's my trick that I just use for me. Feel free to use it or not. I ignore the, the negative sign on the 30, and the first thing I do is just write the factors of 30. 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, 4 won't go into it, but 5 times 6, and then it switches around 6 times 5, 10 times 3, and so on. Okay, now, but this is not positive 30, it's negative 30. So one of these numbers has to be negative. So I'll, I start out like this. And then I write the numbers again, but I switch the negative sign. This works for me. OK, because this is a negative number. So if I multiply two numbers together, one of those numbers has to be negative. OK, so there are my factor pairs. Step five is choose the factor pair that adds up to B. Now I can see here, it would be better if I included that as another sentence up here, because it just makes sense to do it up here. Okay, so I am looking for B, the B number, ah, but now the B number is no longer negative four, it's negative one. So I need two numbers that will add up to negative one. Aha, negative five plus six is positive one plus, and five plus negative six is negative one. So my two numbers are going to be five and negative six. So step five here is a check for your choice, for my choice. Am I correct? Well, we've got to check this out. The product of the two numbers, five times negative six equals negative 30. And I look back and I make absolutely sure, yes, yes, okay. That negative, what I was checking was, is negative 30 the right number? Yes, it is. When you get to be my age, you have to double check stuff. But I remember having to double check when I was young too. 
Now the sum of the two numbers means I add them, and I already did this. but I'm going to double check anyway. The B number is negative one. Yes, that's what I need. All right, now I know what my two numbers are. Yay, yay for me. You're allowed to clap for yourself. Pat yourself on the back. It feels good, unless you have a sunburn. All right, now, Step something. Step six, create a four term polynomial by breaking apart the middle term. Because we have to use grouping and I cannot use grouping on a trinomial. I need four terms. So that's what I'm gonna get. Now the original problem, remember, is in the parentheses there, 2r squared minus 1r minus 15. 2r squared minus 1r minus 15. The first and last terms stay the same. 2r squared and minus minus 15. Ah, but negative 1r has to split apart. I'm going to have to use 5r plus negative 6r. Now it doesn't really matter what my order is. But notice that you already know you're going to have to find a GCF for the first set of parentheses. Your life will be a little bit easier if you put the 2 and the 6 together and the 5 and the 15 together. And because you're adding, order doesn't matter. So 5R plus negative 6R will give you exactly the same answer as negative 6r plus 5r. But can you still get the right answer if you don't do that? Yes, you can. You try it. You'll see. All right, I'm going to put minus 6r here and plus 5r here. And those are going to be my four terms. And see, negative 6r plus 5r equals negative 1r. So I haven't changed the value of the expression. Now, I have to, yes, Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this again simply because I know I love to miss copy. It's just, it's like a chronic disease with me if I'm given the opportunity. So here, I don't know why this particular PDF editor has to make the copy so large, but it's okay. Incidentally, I really love this. Um, it wasn't created by Microsoft, but it's um, licensed to Microsoft. It's called Drawboard. And you can create PDFs and write on them or turn other documents into PDFs and write on them. You can combine documents into one document. It's super, I love it. Something I haven't found out how to do is how to split one document into two documents. I'm going to send them that suggestion, but not now. Okay, have to scratch my back. All right, now I am going to group. And this is how you group. You put parentheses around the first two terms and parentheses around the second two terms. 
Now, admittedly, that's not really neat, is it? So let me, no, ah, there it is. Hello? Well, fine, to heck with you. See if I tell anybody you're perfect again. Oh, because it's a picture. Duh. Okay. Thank you. And I flattened it, which means it's there permanently. Okay. All right. I get the idea. Here we go. I have to factor this by GCF. This is 2 times R times R minus 3 times 2 times R. R. Now the reason I did it that way is notice this is the leading term. I know a 2 is going to be in both of those terms and an R is going to be in both of those terms. But since that's a positive 2, the GCF for this, this set of parentheses has to be a positive 2. So I just wanted to make sure my 2 was positive. That's all. See, these things move around. It drives me absolutely crazy. Now I can't find my blue marker, so we're just going to have to exist without it. I know that's hard. There. All right. There's a two and an R and a two and an R in both terms at the same time, which makes two R the GCF. I mark through the circled numbers and letters. And what I'm left with is R minus three. Okay, and a way to check yourself is 2R times R is 2R squared, and 2R times minus 3 is minus 6R. Now I bring down my plus sign. Do not lose your plus sign. I know that 5 will go into 15, but this is the highest degree term. 5 is positive here, so 5 has got to be positive here. Therefore, I'm going to do the same kind of trick. 5, uh, hello, 5R five minus 3 times 5. Kind of ensure I've got a positive 5 there. Um, all right, we'll use another color. 5 and five. That's going to be my GCF. And I'll be left with, oop, mark through it, mark through it, R minus three. Now I look at the entire expression, but is it the entire expression? No, remember you've got a four that was already pulled out as a GCF for the entire expression. So we can't lose that. But here for this, R minus three is the GCF. It occurs on both sides of the plus sign. So R minus three, mark, mark, and the leftovers are 2R plus 5. Which does not make that the right answer, because this guy has to join them in the answer box. Now I'm going to kind of jump the gun I do this. And write the answer, then we'll check it. Five. 
4 from the front page, r minus 3 times 2r plus 5. And now I'm going to leave the checking of this up to you because we have a U substitution problem coming. Here we have, it's not a quadratic trinomial, it's a six degree trinomial. There is no method for doing that. However, notice that six is two times three, which means we can use U substitution, which back in the Middle Ages was mu substitution. Substitution. Mu substitution. Okay, but we're gonna use a U. That's what people do. I also am gonna look for a GCF, and there is not one. Five will go into 15 and 25, but not into four. And two and four will go into four, but not into 15 and 25. So we are stuck with this. There is no GCF. Oops, that's down here. No GCF. Factor out a greatest common factor if there is one, and there is not one. Okay, now, this kind of problem needs a step one and a half. So I'm gonna make it right here. Step 1.5. Sounds like an upgrade. AC method 1.5. Okay. I have to do my use substitution. So here we go. The way we do this, first you have to know for sure that this power is two times that power. And that you're only dealing with three terms. And there's a constant at the end. You need for all of that to be true to be able to use U substitution. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to make U equals. What do I let U equals? Equal. I let U equal this term right there. W to the third power. And then if I square both sides of this equation, u squared equals w cubed squared. Then I know that because when you have a base raised to a power raised to a power again, you multiply the powers. That's going to be w to the sixth power. Now I see, because I have a w to the sixth power here, and I have a w to the third power there, I can rewrite this temporarily as a quadratic. A quadratic trinomial. 4u squared plus 15 u minus 25. This is now temporarily a quadratic trinomial and I can always or almost always solve a quadratic trinomial. If worse comes to worse, you can use the quadratic formula, which we will be discussing 
later in the semester. So I now am going to write down my A and my B and my C. A is four, B is 15, and C is negative 25. Notice that the minus sign travels with the number behind it. I'm gonna make that into an arrow. There. Okay, so now, now we can speed it up. Now it's not gonna be a challenge till we get to the end. And even then it might not be. Multiply A by C. Okay, here's A, here's C. Four, times negative 25 equals negative 100. We're going to have to factor negative 100. But it might not be the worst thing. OK, negative 100 equals. I'm going to do the trick I did before, and that is just write down 100 equals. 1 times 100, 2 times 50, 3 won't go evenly into 100, but 4 does, 4 times 25, 5 times 20, 6 won't go evenly, 7 won't go evenly, 8, Will eight, eight would, no, but it won't. Eight into 100, but I'm gonna make sure. Eight goes into 10 one time. One times eight is eight. 10 minus eight is two. No, eight will not go evenly into 20. Okay, so nine, 10. 10 will go evenly into 100. OK, so now I recognize, whoop, OK, that's a negative number. Therefore, one of these numbers has to be negative. And then come back over here. One times negative 100. Two times negative 50. Four times negative 25, five times negative 20, and that not six, 10 times negative 10. And now I have to choose the factor pair. These are factor pairs that add up to the middle number. 15. All right, so we look at these and we add them mentally. 20 minus 5 is 15, positive 15. And this is positive 15. So here's our factor pair. Why me? Why? All this crap. Okay. Sorry. So my two numbers are going to be negative five and 20. Now to check myself, the product of the two numbers, negative five times 20 is negative 100. Yes, you've done it before, but it's so good to check. And the sum, negative 5 plus 20 equals positive 15. Ta-da! This is what we're looking for. So now I'm going to break apart 
create a four term polynomial by breaking apart the middle term of the quadratic trinomial into two equivalent terms using the, the numbers from step five. Well, okay, I have to try to remember what this is. No, not that, we changed it. 4u squared plus 15u, 4u squared plus 15u, minus 25. Okay, and this is good. I have two factors, negative five and 20, and I can also use them as 20 and negative five, whatever is more convenient. And just like before, I know that four goes into 20 evenly and five goes into 25 evenly. So it would be better to write them, I mean a little better. You don't have to. Remember, you can still get the right answer, but it's a matter of what makes life easier. So four U squared plus 20, minus 5u minus 25. And that's what I'm going to take to the next page because my choice made things a little more complicated. I can't be stuck with a minus in the middle. I'm gonna to have to put a little extra work into this. Now, there has to be a plus. Whoa, I have to flatten first. There you go. Okay. A plus right there for you. Then you can put parentheses around the first two terms. And then you can put parentheses around the second two terms. The first set of parentheses will be easy, er. In fact, it's usually just outright easy and straightforward. First set of parentheses is four times u squared, and the second set of parentheses is five times four. Is there a u there? Of course there's a u there. My goodness. Why am I not? Oh, right. Same issue. Same issue. All right, watch a little magic here. Gosh, most of my. My stuff has disappeared. Well, all right. I hate it. Never mind. All right, I'm just going to have to mark through it. How do you like that? Admit that I made a mistake. Oh dear. Yes. Yes. There's a U there. Plus, I, here's the hard one, so I'm going to wait. All right, four. Those stinkers must still be updating. Hmm. Okay. Each term contains a four and each term contains a U. 
This is, now may I please have an eraser, please? Thank you, thank you. U times U. So each term contains a U and a U. So both terms contain a 4U. 4U U plus 5. Okay, but really it's always safer to do that. U plus 5 are my leftovers. Now I can't put it off any longer. This is a binomial in here, two terms that are a polynomial. Um, the degree of the U is one, and the degree of any constant is zero. This is the highest degree term, and it has a negative coefficient. The leading coefficient is negative, therefore your GCF has to be negative. Now that we've worked that out. I'm going to have negative 5. Times U. Plus. Negative 25 equals negative. 25. Uh, <laughs> negative 5 times positive 5. Okay, so I need to pull out, because this leading term is negative, I need to pull out a negative GCF. Both terms have negative fives. So negative five is my G, C, F, leaving me with the leftovers U plus five. Okay. Now what I did here, where that came from, is just an acknowledgement of the fact that negative five U minus 25 can also be written as negative 5U plus negative 25. And then negative 5U plus negative 5 times positive 5. Which is how I got here. So I'll just write note here, note. And circle it. All right now. U plus five is our GCF for the entire expression. So I'll write this as U plus five times four u minus five. And then if you put that answer into my math lab, even though it's right, it'll be counted wrong because the answer doesn't have a u in it. U was used to make the problem easier. We have to go back and see what U equals. U equals W to the third power, W cubed. Okay, okay. So, this is W cubed 
plus 5 times 4 times W cubed minus 5. And then because we still have a few minutes left and some of you might not be comfortable with multiplying cubes, I'll go ahead and multiply it for you. We have to multiply these together to make sure the answer is correct. So check. All right, so W this right here. W cubed times the second set of parentheses. Plus five. Times the second set of parentheses. Okay, and now I'll do this. I'll distribute and distribute, and what that will give me is 4w cubed times w cubed minus 5 times w cubed plus 5 times 4 times w cubed is 20w cubed. 5 times minus 5 is minus 25. Okay, now there's a rule and we're going to go over these more in a couple of weeks. There's a rule that says W cubed times W cubed equals W to the 3 plus 3. That is, when you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. 3 plus 3 is 6. So this is going to be 4w to the 6th power. Now here, minus 5w cubed plus 20w cubed what that means is you've got 20 W cubes and you take away five of them. So there will be 15 left. Minus 25. Now I'm going to check and see if that matches the original problem. Four W to the sixth plus fifteen W cubed minus twenty five. Let me copy that and drag it down. This is where it looks like I've said this before, the trinomial did eight New York or even just Rogers, that's where I live. Okay, yes, 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 yes. 4w to the 6 plus 15w cubed minus 25. Yes, yes. High five. Considering it's me, I don't have to put on a glove first. Now what that means, what all this is for, of course, is to see, did I come up with the right answer? And I did. And that makes me feel good. So we are done, and I would be the first to tell you that this is challenging. So as a result, as a result of that truth, I have, like I said at the beginning, but other people have come in, 
I have, let me make this smaller, smaller. I have a bunch of these sheets I made with the steps. And they're blank. So when I upload this in your notes in, in what is this? This is still week four. So the week four module in Canvas. I'll be uploading this, but I'll also upload a blank one so you can copy it and use it. OK, well, this is it. We've got a minute over, but I have had a great time. Monday. We're going to be solving quadratic equations. And maybe finding out. Why, why, why are you having to suffer like this? And like I said, it ends up factoring is one of the most important tools in running businesses and whole economies. And so you'll see how on Monday and I hope you'll be here. Oh, we'll be in class. God willing, nobody better come down with COVID. OK. Talk to you later. Bye bye.